In the words of the great Marshall Mathers, let's get down to business. For I don't have no time to play around. What is this? It's the Mikey Likes You podcast is what it is. I am Mikey who likes. You are you who is liked. That's how that works. Uh, I have. I really do need to get down to business. You know how I get angry about stupid shit. I don't really get angry about serious stuff. I'm pretty controlled. My temper is good. And my ability to control said temper. I am pretty, I'm pretty good with that. Unless it's something aggravating that's not important. And, and, it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it happened again with 80s cinema. Now, I know cocaine is awesome. Literally, I, I know, because I've, I've done more than most people and smoked so much crack. Uh, but I don't remember it making me fucking stupid. I thought it would make me overly confident, arrogant. The hubris was through the roof. But I, I kind of think it sharpened me up most of the time. Now, granted, maybe there was like long kind of sleep deprived hazes fugue states that that I was you know my brain was mushy but I have a, a sneaking suspicion that is not where that's not the position of Hollywood screenwriters 1978 to 1989 when I'm sure everyone was just doing cocaine lots of it you good big dog um, I'm sure there was just, just, just tremendous amount. I'm sure there was just like screenwriting rooms. People were punching up scripts with, with blow on it, just shoveling it in with the actual paper that the script was typed up on like fucking Tony Montana with a Harvard education. You guys from national lampoons are like, <laughs> but I, I'm watching the Running Man, which is actually an excellent film. It's actually pretty good. I, I think people who are either younger or they weren't into action films in the 80s, they have this assumption that all kind of Schwarzenegger, Stallone films are in this one area of vapid, mindless, with lots of violence. Um, that's not always the case. There is the Commandos and Rambo 3 where it's just, just like, just blood. It's just, just carnage. But a lot of these movies were really well acted, well written, thoughtful. Uh, there, uh, many times it was based on you know legendary sci fi uh, novels and um, you know or war movies. You know, kind of thought pieces like Rambo: First Blood was not um, really not a very violent film at all, and it's not really a war movie. It's not you know just Stallone machine gunning people down. It's a really incredibly well acted people forget that Stallone is a really good actor if you go back and watch First Blood when he's talking to you know his uh, colonel who comes back to like save him you know like and, and Warren Brian Den he's like if you engage with him you're gonna need a lot of body bags he's only one man Brian Denny says and he's like no not for him for all your men um, when he's talking to that guy and Stallone's talking about like how he was in Vietnam and, and he came back and he didn't feel like he was being appreciated by the people that he went over there. He didn't have any political feelings. He's just like, I just do what I was supposed to do. I didn't have to go there. I didn't start a war. He's good, man. He's so good. Anyway, and Schwarzenegger too. It's Schwarzenegger time. And the, the original Predator is a fucking excellent movie. And so The Running Man is too. And Total Recall, these are all like Philip K. Dick uh, novels um, that were, were like dense thought pieces, you know? Um, anyway, so I'm watching The Running Man. <laughs> and a great film. You should watch it if you're not into it. If you haven't seen it already. But there's a scene, like The Running Man's based on a game show in the not-too-distant future, a dystopian future where... Uh, Schwarzenegger's character set up, but he, now he's a criminal. He's been charged with crimes that he did not commit. And in this dystopian future, there's actually a game show where criminals fight for their lives against like superhero figures. And there's different levels and everything. 
and it's the number one show in the world. People watch the shit out of it because it's just different, like, souped up, roided out dudes with weapons fucking murking criminals, you know? So, you understandably, people are into this, and they're taking bets, and it's like the biggest show in the world, okay? And the, in the movie, the the host of the show is actually Richard Dawson from Family Feud, which is sweet. He, and he's so good. He's like the smarmy dude. Well, Schwarzenegger's, because he's Arnold, he's fucking every one of these, like, superhero characters up. He's just going through them. And now the, the movie, or the, the, the game show people are starting to get worried because he's just fucking going through these. And it's not supposed to happen like that. Usually, they barely get past the first level because it's such a hard game and they don't have weapons and they don't have shit. And they're confused and scared. And then these people come through with, you know, blades and traps and they kill. But Schwarzenegger, because he's Schwartz, is is just wrecking people. He gets to the stage with the guy who, like, his his thing is ice. Okay? It's, his name is Sub-Zero. Good name for a guy who's in an ice rink on skates with, like, a blade, a hockey stick that's like a big machete. And he fucks you up. It was, it was, a, it's a sweet character. Like, you know, there's an electric guy and like a, you know, anyway. So he's fighting Sub-Zero. And then he kills him. And then this happens. Killian! He is Sub-Zero. Now, Plain Zero. I barely graduated high school. I'm a fucking idiot. Immediately, immediately watching that, I was like, wait, plain zero is more. It's a higher value than sub zero. The word sub zero means below zero. Bajo de, it's below it, sub. Now, just plain zero. And he's like, oh, got him. No one who wrote this movie, no, none of the producers, none of the assistant producers, none of the line producers, none of the grips, none of the cameramen were like, hey, wait, wait, hold, hold on, hold a second. That's more. Zero is more than sub-zero. How much blow was there? I don't think there's enough cocaine for me to not, me and my, my idiot troglodyte friends to be like, uh, wait, wait a second. Wait, wait. Sub zero. That's negative. Zero. That's that's a negative number. That's less than zero. Your 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 witty pithy line where people are just going yeah. That does, it makes no sense. I was fucking. I'm so angry. Now, now just plain zero, and no one can expect Arnold at that point in his life. To be like, ah, everyone, wait, wait, no, this doesn't make mathematical sense. He was just like, where's my check? This is fantastic. Sub-Zero! Fuck you! All right, it's a and a You provide the Qs, I provide the A. That's how it goes. I do want to take a moment. I encourage you to go back and listen to the previous episode if you haven't already. Jake Denham, who is a uh, Patreon client of mine, but he also has a, a c- cerebral palsy. And he, we have a great conversation. I think a really, really meaningful conversation about like what it means, adversity really means, and being able to control it and deal with it in a, in a reasonable and, 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 and positive way. <clears throat> yeah. And he's just a good dude. He's a really good dude. And I encourage you to listen to it. So previous episode, Jake Denham, uh, but now on to the Q&A. At what point should one stop? Me- oh, it's from Jake, De- <laughs> from Jake Denham. At what point should one stop measuring food? Post-cut, post-bulk maintenance phase? It's a good question. Um, you kind of have to feel that out. There's no kind of cement marker where you say, this is when I'm stopping um, um, tracking. You will reach a point where you are capable of understanding your own body and your sense of hunger when you exceed how much you really need 
and and being able to really genuinely eyeball how much food you know within a couple hundred calories or within a hundred calories and within a couple grams of proteins carbs fats whatever you i you know i can, at this point can really eyeball uh meats chicken you know any type of red meat and chicken and fish pretty pretty damn good and then uh you know it's a little bit sketchier with carbs but you can do it and you know sometimes if you just go with uh, protein and veggies and, you know, kind of carb-free or low-carb veggies, it, it just it becomes so much easier. And that's, I think, a lot of the reason why people gravitate towards carnivore, uh, paleo, keto thing is because it's just it's easier. And you're more than likely ending up falling short of your caloric needs because you just don't eat as much. But... <sighs> I, I think when you can honestly tell yourself that you're capable of maintaining things and you have an understanding of how much you're eating, and it it varies for me. I, it was easier for me because I grew up in a world where like I understood that f- food was fuel. At the same time, my father, like a like like off the charts geeky foodie, he's a in the international wine and food society and the whole thing and like it like travels around the world just to go to restaurants and and he, he would introduce me to that world and i at a very young age developed an appreciation for food far beyond just like i'm hungry this tastes good um so i got a sense and i started cooking at a very young age because of it and then i drew a, a little bit of a closer relationship with food now so once I spent a couple years tracking and then went through like competitive bodybuilding where I got obsessive about tracking, it just, after a while, I got really good at it. Now, that being said, I still go back and I track when I'm time, when it's time to go ham, when it's time for me to get nasty, I definitely am tracking. I'm sitting there with my fitness pal or carbon like any other dude or gal. Um, so I think that when you can honestly say that you have a full understanding and a good, solid, positive relationship with food, and how much you're eating, you can stop tracking. When you want to recommit yourself to a more kind of hard to achieve goal, you start back up again. If you only had to work out three days a week, what workouts would you do each day? Thank you. Well, Avile five, I do only usually work out three days a week, sometimes four. Now this is, I'm talking specifically in a strength and conditioning capacity. Um, because, you know, I'll do jujitsu three or four days a week and sometimes some type of like striking. And I do a lot of like non-exercise physical activity, a lot of NEPA because I'm a farmer now. And I also, I enjoy being outdoors and walking. But as far as like going to a gym and, and resistance training, I really do only train three or four days a week. And I encourage anybody else to do the same thing. Um, and three days a week is actually probably really better for most people. I only really train four days a week when I'm, and sometimes, you know, I'll be honest, sometimes five if I'm really, but that's like hypertrophy, you know, when I'm looking to yoke up. I don't think most people are. I think most people want to lose some body fat and concurrently either gain a small amount or, or retain the muscle that they have. And, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a fat loss diet, it's actually more beneficial to train a little bit less and train heavier and train harder. Most people have it totally backwards. One of the biggest myths, perpetual myths that you see in the fitness world is like, I'm losing weight. So it's time to do like low, low weight, high reps. Let's, let's cut them. Let's carve out the, the cuts. That's never happened once in human history. So suck my dick. It might've been a little extreme. But if you're willing to suck my dick, please do so. Um, but here, yeah, my point is, is that uh, isolation movements tend to be less important. Um, isolation of smaller body parts tends to be less important. And your commitment to bigger compound movements at heavier weights in lower reps is actually, that's really appropriate for when you're trying to lose body fat. You're sending good hormonal signals and you're keeping your metabolism in a right in a good place and it's going to be probably just better for you overall when you're in a caloric deficit, okay? So 3 days a week I train full body 3 days a week. When I'm trying to lean up. And then I I, I it's essentially like 
a powerlifting strength block that I do. And then I just try to keep the calorie, the caloric deficit very small. And, um, you know, because you can gain strength beyond the fact that you're getting like cross-sectional growth in your muscles. There's other things, there's other factors, mechanical kind of advantages, force development and connective tissue, all of that leads into how you develop strength. But one of the big aspects of lifting heavy weights is that you get tremendous positive hormonal feedback, which is so important when you're trying to lose body fat. So three days a week, I do, I switch off between two different types of squats, usually high bar and low bar, not front squats. Sometimes I fuck with front squats, but it's usually more about, I would say like really recommend people getting good at squatting, whether if you don't like low bar, you know, low bar back squats, like a more powerlifting squat, then don't do that. If you don't like high bar squats, if you can't do either of the, or, you know, either or, don't do those. And most people confuse the two. And that's why I think a lot of injuries happen. You see a lot of people with these like big fucking arches and, you know, this like posterior tilt, you know, where people are like arching to squat. I'm always like, whoa, you're going to be in pain soon. You know, and they wonder why they can't hit uh, and a lot of a lot of chicks too. I, I've noticed a lot of chicks just don't they squat like shit. And like the new culture is so about like she squats, big glutes, big legs. Like watch this chick, but then no one takes the time to like squat properly. And I think a lot of girls, especially fit girls, they have this notion that as long as I can go from point A to point B, I'm doing it right. And this is not true. Um, there's so much like posterior tilt like we're essentially arching your back you shouldn't be arching your back um it should be really neutral you know your spine should be neutral in a high bar or low bar back squat so do do a, some form of squat every day all, all three days some form of deadlift all three days now i don't think people should conventional deadlift three days a week that's you're going to tax your central nervous system too much and you're gonna hurt yourself but I conventional deadlift once a week and then another one of the three workouts I will do Romanian deadlift and I will do uh, sumo squat or sumo stance deadlift. So that's every workout, all three workouts. I then toggle back and forth between bench press and overhead press. And then after that, the rest is just kind of details. Like whatever accessory work you want to get done, I like – I always like chin-ups for people, you know, working up to weighted chin-ups. It's really beneficial. Um, some type of core work, ab work, you know, and then maybe like an arm workout, you know, like an arm exercise for three or four sets. Keep it heavy. Go after it. And that's three days a week, man. And you would be you would be shocked at like how well that works. If you simplify things, if you get back to basics, when things aren't adding up, the last thing you want to do is add more. That when things aren't adding up, start subtracting. Get back to fucking what matters and go after it hard. That's my that's my best advice for that. Uh, what are your thoughts on the blood type diet? I, my thoughts are none. I don't have thoughts on it. I don't know if it's good. Don't know if it's bad. Don't know anything about it. Uh, I think it makes sense. I, I, I think there's some type of common sense to it. You know, but as Balzac said, uh, sometimes... Common sense is not so, it was either Voltaire or Balzac, some Frenchy. Uh, sometimes common sense is not so common. I don't know what your blood type would play into. And look, medical people, uh, seemingly medical uh, experts, are going to make a lot of claims online. It's a problem with online shit. You know, I saw some doctor, I don't know if he was an MD or not, but he was just talking shit about how, like, <laughs> whey protein's toxic to the system because and I'm like well let's just not that's not true I would love any scientific evidence that that's a thing and he was a doctor like he claims to be a doctor and he's on Instagram talking about how it's one of the most to and that you should use plant protein instead I was like okay uh, let me see any shred of scientific evidence that that's a thing and I will get off your case. But, you know, it just happens day in and day out. So the people behind the blood diet may make a lot of claims. I have no idea whether they're true or not. And that goes for a lot of things, with especially with nutrition. 
it's a little bit less. You see the people dial it down a lot less with training because most people don't know shit about training because most people don't train properly anyway. But with diet, man, you could make a lot of money not knowing dick. Just like throwing out there like it, the alkaline water is the key and no, no seed oils or no artificial sweeteners or no this, no that. Like your adrenal glands are – and it's like shut the fuck up. None of that's – just none of that's true, you know? Like creatine. Creatine is just like people have this idea in their head like creatine's going to help harm your kidneys or liver. It's it, there's z- literally zero th- science ever ever that's ever said that zero at any level of creatine use like at, at any at crazy crazy dosages there's never been a sign of that but be, oh, plenty of people believe it yeah so uh, with the blood type diet I don't know I don't know and I don't want it to give you I don't want to lead you in either direction because I don't know shit but I will give you I will just heed my advice that. When it comes to online, very specific, very unique diets, uh, almost always it's it's just a money-making scheme. Things based around digestion can be very valid. You know, I know that there's like elimination diets where people start looking at different things like nightshades and and that that's there's 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 value to that. I, I I and I also I don't have enough scientific knowledge of it to then make the positive or negative claim on that either. But I do know that there is validity in the world of like digestion and metabolic health. There's some shit to that. But um, with blood, I don't know. Pinche gringo one. How do you feel about row machines? Also, MCT, yay or nay? Uh, Row machines? Uh, They're fine. They're great. I mean... I think a row machine is great for people who have gotten to the point where they need to use a row machine. Um, I don't think most people are there. Just do dumbbell and barbell rows. Do that. Frankly, do body weight rows. Most people can't fucking do body weight rows. You understand me? That's not an insult. You're maybe watching this being like, I'm Jack. I'm gonna get no. You, most people can't do body weight rows. Um, so just work on the bait. I, like, really, I know I'm ha- hitting a, uh, I, I'm just smashing a dead horse. Uh, but basics are that important and fundamentals are that important for a reason. And most people don't want to do them for a couple reasons. One, they're harder. Two, uh, it's not sexy. Like a body weight row is far less appealing to your senses, to everyone else, and then putting plates on a machine and like moving it. It's like this, the iron moving and everything. And uh, you put up a video of yourself doing bodyweight rows. People are like, oh, cool. The calisthenics, neat. That's, you know, old as human history. Yeah, well, most people can't do that shit. You know, so row machines, they have their value. You know, once you, ex- once you get to the point, like I said, I think when people get to the point that where they need a row machine, you should use a row machine. When you get to the point where you've built up enough foundational strength and muscle mass, like then you do, you do you have to start tooling around with isolation and hitting the back from different angles and stuff like that. And row machines can be excellent for that. Um, but I just don't think, and, and you know, you they can go in both directions. If you can't do a body weight row, which I challenge most people to go give it a shot, where you actually have your feet and your head at the same level and you're rowing yourself up on like a bar or something. Hey, most people can't do it. Can't pull their chest to the bar. So work on that. But if you can't do that, uh, another way to kind of get yourself to that point is to start using machines. So it's a, it's a kind of a, a weird thing where it goes in both directions. I do think you can utilize that, but always have in mind that the main goal, especially for, for the overwhelming majority of people at, at very different differing levels, is just to be good at the basics, at the fundamentals. Just hammer that home. There's no, there's no downside to that. If you, if there is a huge downside into trying to go and do things that are just far beyond your your need for them, you you don't necessitate these machines and these exercises and these types of things at all because you kind of st- you're you're stepping over steps A and B to get to C. There, there's no downside to just staying, keeping, just going over A and B over and over again. Um, and, and then one day you'll get to the point where, like, 
you know, The Rock needs to do certain machines. He needs to isolate m- movements at a time. Um, but most of us are not. I mean, I, I fuck with machines here and there to activate my chest. A lot of times, sometimes I'll do pre-exhaustion stuff. You know, I do machines. Um, I do use a row machine. But it's always after I deadlift. It's always af- after I chin up. It's always after I, I, I do pendlay rows and barbell rows and stuff. You know, I, I trained back yesterday. I did not, I mean, I I didn't use any machines. I, I did deadlifts for, I did a lot of deadlifting. Um, I did some like power shrugs. Uh, I did dumbbell rows, heavy as shit. And uh, some weighted chin-ups, you know? So uh, they're fine, they have their use. I don't think they're necessary for most people. Uh, now on to uh, Pinche Gringo's second question. MCT. MCT is a useful uh, tool, especially in a fat loss situation. Also, it helps with hunger. The problem with it is that many, 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 many people's digestive system does not handle MCTs well. They're very rapidly digested. They're medium chain tri- triglycerides. That's essentially just like the chains of fats, long chains, short chain, and medium, medium chain triglycerides found uh, most commonly in like palm oil and coconuts and things like that. When you isolate them, they can be so quickly digested and which is the, the benefit, they provide energy. Uh, and they can they can provide some metabolic kind of boost. They definitely help with dealing with hunger, but uh, a lot of people get ser- serious stomach distress, like, like fucking I'm not going to work today, stomach distress, from even small dosages. So, um, if you're looking to lose weight, use MCT oil b- with caution. Start at very low doses and increase as you, until you find what you're comfortable, you know, the, the highest levels that you're comfortable with. Another thing is, is like MCT oil is really not, should not be used with people who are eating like a flexible mixed diet. That's a big mistake I see a lot of people making is they, 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 they use these like keto kind of high fat, low carb treats or, 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 or supplements or food products. And then two hours later, they have pizza and bananas. And I'm like, wait, well, fucking, this is a bad, bad thing. You can't have bulletproof coffee. That's like 800 calories for breakfast and then eat hamburger and fries for lunch, thinking that you're doing yourself a favor. You're just going to be fatter. You're having a thousand calories of coffee which is a thing if you're going to then continue to live a prolonged period of time with uh, with low carb high fat intake but you don't you don't do vice versa you know just in the same way that like a rice cake may have like very little calories and it's like a snack that you could crunch on that's a fine if you're if you're eating a higher carb moderate carb diet is something for you to crunch on and popcorn or whatever but it's terrible if then you're going to go and eat try to be keto you know, flake. So just kind of get that shit together. What's the best method for measuring body fat? I know they all have their issues, but I use DEXA and sometimes get weird results like saying I lost muscle despite gains in the gym from New Talos. No, DEXA is pretty accurate. It's very accurate. And that's not a weird result. You lost muscle. I, I talked about it in the answer to uh, an earlier question. There's many things that go into development of strength or even increases in strength that aren't muscle mass related. Um, just competency in the exercises, getting better at it, learning how to use leverage better and, and you know, deadlift and squat. Um, connective tissue strength is a, is a big thing. Uh, force development relies on many factors outside of just the size of the muscle. That is a, that is a, 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 a part of it for sure but uh, you know it, it depends on what you think like for instance you can train to gain lot specifically to gain muscle mass and lose strength in the opposite direction so I mean don't be surprised if you legitimately has nothing to do with flaws in the DEXA scan you go and it says that you have three pounds of gained muscle but you're weaker in the bench press or the squat because you've been doing kind of hypertrophy based stuff and that increases cross-sectional 
density and size in muscles, but it doesn't have anything to do necessarily with force development. That's why I've always been a big proponent of using both training methods um, to develop musculature. Musculature. Uh, so I stick with DEXA and it's not a weird result. You're, you lost body, you lost lean muscle mass. You're probably trying to go too hard with your diet. You're probably trying to do too much. You want to lose too much body fat too quickly. And you're not going to do that and you're going to lose muscle and you're going to, that, that's, you're, you're on your way to skinny fat. Trust me. Okay. You, I could say it a million times. I'm sure there's plenty of people who are listening right now who are like, yeah, but I could get shredded. I could just be, I'll do a thousand calorie deficit for a week and everything will be great. And then I'll get, you know, I'll slowly bug and go back. No, you can't. And I'll do cardio for three hours a day and uh, on top of lifting and it doesn't work that way. All right, um, I'm going to dip into my Patreon exclusive email here for a question from Brian Spratt because it is a good one. And I'm gonna end on this one, it's fucking really good. I'm not advocating bulimia, but if you fall hard off the wagon with food, like a steak dinner with appetizer, sides, bread basket, and dessert, maybe a couple cocktails, and you're left feeling not only uncomfortably full, but also know you fell short on your decisions to eat right, the right amount of calories, is a finger down your throat and a pledge to do better ever a good idea? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question, okay? I know a lot of people because, and he even started off, uh, Brian's not a dumb person. He's a, he, this is a thoughtful guy. He even started off by saying, I'm not trying to encourage bulimia in any way. And no one is. It's very serious. It's not funny. It's not funny. Like binging and purging, bulimia, any type of eating disorder. It's, 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 I was about to say, it's like, it's just as hard, uh, harmful and hardcore to deal with and just as just as much suffering goes into it as as many drug addictions honestly now i'm a drug guy staying off drugs and alcohol is fucking impossible for me and uh i had to work hard and i suffered a lot but you know seriously eating disorders body image issues stuff can 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 make people to, to to get to suicidal levels Okay, your entire world is destroyed by it. It's not. It's not funny. I on the because and the reason I say it's not funny is because I am a guy who has, for comedy's sake, forced myself to be. I'm I'm that bonehead, you know. And I know that like the jackass guys, like Steve O's, really good at puking. He can make himself kind of, you know, he can exaggerate the situation a little. Uh, he, there may be something gross going on, but Steve-O can make himself vomit. And it's funny. You're like, oh my God, he's drinking the beer off the guy's long fingernails. Oh, the man with the world's longest fingernails. And he's drinking beer off it. Oh my God, it's so gross. And then he'll puke it up. It does make it funnier. And I've been that guy. I've been at parties and been hammered and fucking like, well, I'm going to go puke on the table. Yeah. But it is a good question. Because you think, look, not only have you eaten too much and you fucked your diet up, but you, sometimes you eat so much and you just go, you've been dieting like crazy. You've been really watching what you eat. And the next thing you know, it's like, I'm at this dinner. It's so, and then you take that one bite of bread and you're like, fuck this. And you just devour. Then next thing you know, you're like, fuck this. Fuck it all. Okay. I might, I might as well just go for broke because I've, I've, I've ruined my diet. So let's have cocktails. Let's order dessert. Then you get so full that you're like, you're, you're sick. Like you feel gross to the point that like maybe vomiting might help. Maybe vomiting might save you from other further, maybe more serious sickness. So in that case, I recommend something you could take to evacuate this as opposed to manually doing it like Ep epicac or something like that um because i just don't ever and here's why i'm really really against ever trying to uh, here's why i'm really against ever giving any type of positive reinforcement to the idea of putting your finger down your throat to force vomit is because I am a very neurotic guy when it comes to diet and my body image. Very neurotic. And I'm a very extreme person. 
I can't control myself with things. When I like something, I go just off the rails. When I don't like something, I, I just, not only do I not do it, I will like walk over, I will just create a stream of dead bodies to avoid doing it, you know? Um, and I'm, I'm an extreme person and I've always been very into fitness and nutrition. And I have pretty desperate body image issues that I had to have like mental health professionals deal with it over a long period of time. Uh, so I am the type of person who would have experimented with regurgitation. Yet the only time I ever did that, ever, was before my first marriage. When I was at the peak of depression. Genuinely thinking about killing myself every single day, numerous times a day. Finding it impossible to make it to work every day. Every day I'd get out of bed when that alarm went off at like 3.34 in the morning and to drive into Kevin and Bean and I'd just be like, I can't, I don't know, I'm gonna drive off the road. I'm not gonna, I'm on the 110 freeway, you know, and I'm just gonna, I, I was, I was a, an emotional, miserable man. And that's the only time the guy who's obsessive about his appearance and his diet, who had been into, into bodybuilding, where I'm weighing out every fucking calorie, and I certainly like in my diets, uh, leading up to being on stage in a fucking Speedo, fucked up my diet and it would have been like thought you were like hmm, i could just make that go away and then we all win and i never th i was like no that's that's not I, I don't need that only when i went to a mental state where i was like exceedingly sick and depressed did i think like oh let's just do that and i wasn't even eating that bad of shit so i'm really averse to e ever giving you the 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 thumbs up pardon the pun <laughs> On, on putting fingers in your mouth to force vomit. Because I at least have seen that there's a real correlation to not only your body image, not only how you feel about the food you just ate, how, discom uh, how uncomfortable your belly is. I think that there's a real connection to self-harm with that. So go to the store, get some Ipecac or something and just take a teeth with <laughs> it. It's, it's almost... Look, that I will recommend. Give it a shot. Be careful because you have too much. You can it can be it can make you sick. Like really, like go to the hospital, fucked up, sick. You know from bomb. but Ipecac is crazy. I P E C A C. Also the name of Mike Patton's uh, <laughs> record label. I fooled around with that once just for for comedy again. For, it, it was like that scene in The Family Guy where they're puking and it's just nonstop. And that's how I was vomiting. It's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah. I love you guys. I am available on Patreon. If you would like further assistance, if you would like access to special uh, patron-only meetups, virtual ones, and uh, content, and training plans, and nutrition plans, and then also the top tier if you want me to train you and give you personal day by day. I have you have access to me twenty four seven. The same one, the same email that Brian just emailed me on for that question. Uh, you get access to all that, and I become your personal kind of guy to guide you. It's all available. I'm Mike Catherwood on that their Patreon and like subscribe. Help me out if you can. Tell friends to listen to Mikey likes you, to watch Mikey likes you, whatever the fuck. I love you. Uh, and in this crazy mixed up world that makes you think that nobody cares, remember I do.